This whole coronavirus crisis began for us in Simfuegos on the 10th of March when we checked out of Cuba. At the start, we weren't affected at all, being in the middle of nowhere with absolutely no one around. But then a Cuban military vessel told us we had to go right there and then. No question about whether we had food, fuel or water. Just go now. There was some wind, but mostly not. We travelled at an average speed of less than two knots, covering less than 50 nautical miles per day for the next nine days. The boat pendulumed roughly 36,000 times during the lulls and my brain turned into cooked porridge. But it wasn't all bad. Check out the dolphins. We were so happy to find a secluded bay in the Dominican Republic with no one here, no roads and no development. Just beautiful tall cliffs with clear water and white sandy beaches. We were looking forward to sleep and hiding out here for three weeks until the quarantine was over. Well, I was wrong and we were kicked out. So we sailed back to Haiti and on entering their waters, we were kicked out two hours later. We were getting good at this. We then sailed to an isolated island group south of Jamaica where the mermaids were great, but the fishing was lousy, no matter how hard you look. There was also more and more fishermen coming and going, which made Margarita anxious. So we set sail once more. So where are we going? There isn't a lot of choice, but we are heading for the middle of nowhere, a place called Bajo Nuevo. We have no sailing guide that covers this at all, just some dodgy charts. So I'm going to rely on intelligence and common sense to see me through. Hmm, maybe I better let Margarita take the helm. We've got the wind past 90. This is the way sailing ought to be. Thank goodness, I think it's at 125 or something. My, I, we, I don't think I've ever had it like that. Some have said that Moran Kays was in the middle of nowhere, but where we're going now, now that is in the middle of nowhere. Being 272 nautical miles from the Nicaraguan coast and 270 nautical miles from San Andreas, I reckon we're pretty safe with respect to any authorities. Margarita had run out of patches, so she was crook again, but despite this, the day sailing was sheer delight. But in the night, the wind dropped and we were going to struggle to get in before the end of the next day. It's a massive ship there. We just come up to Nuevo Bank, it's a bit late. We've been told by the Jamaicans to come in northwest. I worked out that if we left early in the morning yesterday and we did just under five knots average, we'd get in here by three. But of course, and it, the forecast was 15 to 20. But of course it died to nothing in the night. I think we had eight knots and I was doing three and a half, struggling, and it was right up our bum. So it was terrible and it was rolly. And so now we're coming in probably two hours too late. It's over there somewhere, somewhere over there, there's the lighthouse. I don't know where it is. But there's some big pumping rollers uh, hitting the reef, so we've got to be careful. There's a the lighthouse. We were very lucky. We came in on an unknown reef to us very late, many hours after, like I should have been in before, like two. We found a patch of sand, we anchored, and I finally felt safe and secure tucked up behind the reef. I don't know how safe we were. I know we are far away from everywhere, but from what we heard from the Jamaicans is there are fishers here that come and fish illegally, so... I don't like that idea. Yeah. Look, I don't think... Look, fishermen are top people. I'm a fisherman people. And, well, I might be the exception that proves the rule. However, I don't think there's going to be any, like, overt act of piracy. Like, because there's no boats out in the ocean at the moment. And they all the pirates would go broke. So, I think it would just be opportunism. They'll come out here. If they're having a rough time and they're not you know, catching their quota or not catching enough and they see a sailboat and everyone knows that sailboats are passive now because everyone takes our guns from us, um, they might think they might get something for free. So 
Well, I think we just got to be a little bit cautious. We've got the security bars on there and there, and we've got wasp spray, we've got loaded spear guns if needed, and we've got um, the flare gun. So, a bit of caution, and I think we should be sweet. We need food. We have very little left. Yeah, we should point out that we're not like your typical cruising boat that stores up an immense supply of canned goods and rice and pasta. Uh, we're, we tend to be on the minimalistic side and we try and do all our catching when we're in the countries. Uh, our last big grocery shop with cans uh, and rice and pasta was actually in Colombia at the beginning this of December. December. That's a long time ago. Now, we did the Caymans after that, where we didn't buy very much because it's very expensive. It's and then we. Fresh stuff. Yeah, and then we went to Cuba and we had uh, Margarita's uh, family when we were in Cuba. And you can't buy anything in Cuba if anyone's ever been to Cuba, uh, there's just nothing there. Although we did manage to uh, buy. Um... We bought lots of. Fresh stuff, but we were for six hours in the line. Six hours in the line to buy fruit and veggies, and they lasted two weeks. So, uh, and that was a long time ago. At this point in time, if we don't catch, we don't eat. So, I am madly getting ready in my spearing gear. I'm very excited. New reef, new day, new possibilities. And I was just about to jump in the boat and nick off when Margarita, who was at the front of the boat, starts yelling at me madly. Um, because I was doing my 360 surveillance, I get a bit paranoid. Um, and I was looking near the breakers where is the reef, and I could see the shape of the persons. And I look with the binoculars and really look to persons. Something was wrong. Either it was fishermen and they were in trouble, they just got swamped by the, the, uh, the waves and had been thrown on the reef into the, like, the sort of the lagoon. Or it was fishermen trying to get in up some of us and then come down on us. So I immediately jumped into the boat and wanted to check it out. As I got closer, three frigate birds flew off the supposed boat and well, well there's no boat at all. False alarm. Okay, so uh, when I got back and told Margarita about it. Boy, did we laugh. Yeah, how could she see people when there weren't any people? I saw people. I showed the, the shape of heads. Yeah, and look, I had a quick look with binoculars before I left too and it did look like people. <laughs> And the boat did look like it was moving because the water was moving past it. Look, I put this in just to show you how two reasonable people, well, reasonable in the broadest sense of the word, behave when the world goes crazy and we're stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Craziness is catching, people. But enough of this nonsense. We've got to get some dinner. It's a bit disappointing. Almost a featureless desert with no fish. It's going to be hard to feed us around here. Yeah, I know this repair will not last, but there ain't no shops around here. The best thing now is to swim the boat with the wind and cover as much ground as possible and try and find a good spot. Okay, we found a good spot with a broken bottom. For all you Northern Caribbean people, you can eat barracuda in the Southwest Caribbean because there is no ciguatera toxin here. And it's a good thing too because there's precious little other fish. Okay, so I have fish for me, but Margarita doesn't like barracuda, so we need to get something for her. There is 
with very little fish. But there is a crab right there. It's female, so we better let her be. There must be a male around here somewhere. Found him. Better depower the gun. Thought he was hard to find with just a bit of light on his elbow. The shooting was easy, but it took four breaths to get him out. That's our little bit of paradise. It's not much. Okay, the uh, mission agenda, because we've got no more gas, is we have to find uh, wood things to burn over there um, and maybe a place to, to uh, cook. How good this place? All right, I see a pallet of wood. That's gonna be good for a week, surely. No doubt this wooden pallet was left behind by an illegal fisherman and also the bag of charcoal too. Margarita is not having a good time and this place is really not paradise at all. Hey, we aren't dead, so it's all up from that. Well, that's it, that's the end of the island. There is no wood. I would say in a big sea, there would be no island, virtually. It would be completely awash. So, yeah, you wouldn't expect any wood to be here. It would have always just got washed away. This really is a tiny island and you guys are seeing it at low tide. Let's take a look at how much land there is on Neep's high tide. Now check out how much island there is at Springs high tide. Basically it's just the tilted base of the old lighthouse. On the bright side you can have a barbecue and a swim at the same time. The ultimate Aussie dream. Well, you need a coldie for that and there ain't no cold one for about 270 nautical miles. Bugger. A lot of things are breaking down on the boat. Our salt water pump has been dead for a couple of weeks now. It was a brand new Jabsco that was only five months old. So now it's a real hassle to do the washing, which only adds to Margarita's stress. I am wondering why I haven't been pushed overboard a long time ago. I was wondering what to use when we ran out of pallet. But the pallet's doing very little. This is the dried sargasm and I put some diesel on it, it soaks it up and it acts as a wick. So I think we're sorted because we got, we got a lot of, we, Margaret is now drying some out now, she's bringing it up. So we should be good. Um, certainly for a week, I think. The other alternative, I was gonna put, um, save some cans, cut them in two, put sand and put a mixture of diesel and uh, petrol. It'd be a very yellow flame, but it wouldn't be very efficient. I was thinking of somehow compressing air and pumping it through the sides to get a bluer flame. But well, we got this sargasm here. This is an easier alternative. We might... Is it good? to be stranded people, crab, lobster and fish. Now we have to be quick in eating in the shade before those frigate birds come back and sit above us. I really don't want to be painted while leading. I'm taking all the wood back to the boat just in case we have a storm and lose it all.
Okay, we're coming up to high tide now and um, it's getting a bit rocky here. There's not really any land to protect us as a bit of reef, but the waves come over, so we've got a lot of cross swell, so it's a bit rocky. So uh, I have to sleep down on the floor uh, near the oven and Margaret has got to sleep here. Hello, Possum. How are you? Hello. So, it's Mar not a bit like Peter said, it like lots. It goes so much that your brain goes crazy and you cannot sleep. So we need to, instead of sleeping uh, vertical like this. No, you mean in line with the boat. You're sleeping the boat, across the boat. To sleep across. And this bed doesn't really fit both of us uh, unless we're sleeping on top of us, uh, on top of each other. Which I'm actually all for, but someone doesn't like that all night. I like my space. Peter, this guy, was a gentleman and he's sleeping now on the floor, so both of us can sleep. Yeah, I'm the dog's body. Now, Marguerite is going to get up and show you where I sleep. And yes, half of my bed is a bean bag. You like it. Say it. I do actually like it. Don't it, lie. It hugs me and it f stops my brain rattling and get, letting those marbles <laughs> bang into each other. There is the hoven. Here's my bean bag. The bean bag. And then he has his spoon <laughs> over there yeah. under the nap station. <laughs> it's a very, very, very safe spot, people, because if there's a fire, we've got a fire extinguisher. And the eper. And if the boat goes down, I got the Eperb right there. When it gets too rocky, the oven door opens on my head, dropping the hand towels over my face. This happened a few times, so when you're already worried about illegal fishermen, this doesn't really help that much. Just to be cautious, we had our radar on 20 minute watch all night. All right, panic stations, at least it looks official, but no doubt they're gonna tell us, well, it's big. It's big and it's white. I don't know what that means. Um, I'm in Australia, our Coast Guard's white. Uh, anyway, they're sort of coming closer. They're a little bit off. Uh, who knows, I'm sure they've seen us. They're not gonna confuse our um, radar signature with the lighthouse. I'm sure they're more professional than that. But we've been running around getting everything right. Margaret is panicking, getting all the, the washing done. So we, at least we've got a clean boat to leave because we're gonna to have to leave and it's four more days. If, if it's Colombian, they're gonna kick us off um, and we can't stop at any other caves on the way down because they're all Colombian. And they'll say, well, we kicked you off. What are you doing here for? Anyway, a bit of excitement. I'm just gonna finish up doing the ropes on the boat because the boat flogs around. But at least we've got the motor off that. Uh, it's in reasonable order. But uh, I should have had the head cam on because we were running around. We did so much in the last 15 minutes, not funny. But they're definitely, they're two nautical miles. They're doing two in 15. So they're doing eight knots. So anyway, we got company. I hope they're polite and kicking us off. All right, they're definitely coming, Margarita. They're coming our way. The vessel coming up to is huge. Margarita looks at it after doing the washing. She goes, oh my good, quick, let's get the weapons. No, yes. because they haven't replied on the radio. Oh yeah, I checked on the radio. They're not answering, which is pretty odd. And my girl goes, quick, get the spear gun loaded. Yeah, against this huge 150 foot military looking vessel, although it's white. So it's probably a coast guard. So it's kind of funny. My girl is on the toilet, sorry, you can't quite. Oh, you can, can you see it? Oh, sorry, I'm in trouble. Yeah, uh, okay, let me get, uh, I'll get the racket ball out and the rackets. That, that could knock someone out. And the spear guns, it'll take three. What are we supposed to do for the other 70 people on the boat with the M16s? Anyway, it's a tense situation at the moment. They're definitely coming towards us now. Um, y no sabemos para dónde, dónde nos podemos um, desbloquear, para qué países nos van a aceptar. Interrogativo si ustedes tienen tanques donde puedan almacenar agua. 
y tanques donde yo pueda pasarles combustible. Uh, what food do we need? Anything that you can spare. A cualquier comida que nos puedas dar es, es bueno, porque por ahora solo tenemos a, a arroz y frijoles, es lo que tenemos comido. Ah! What's wrong? This is just more of the usual, it's getting tiresome, pretty tiresome. What, you think we're going to get kicked out? Right, they're giving us supplies, they say, we did our duty, so knock off. Shush, yeah. shush. Go away. Where, sh where should we go? Where do we have to go now? That means we can't go to any. So, so because Colombia has roofs from here, like they got Quito Serana, they got Ronquidor, Albuquerque Keys, um, San Andreas, Providencia, we can't go to any of those if they kick us out here. So it's a four and a bit day. No, it's 600 miles to. Well, it depends on the wind. Um, Panama. Because we cannot afford to, I don't know for how long this is going to be, to be paying marina, uh, us staying in the marina and then maybe having to go to a hotel, we don't have the money. So that's why we kind of have been staying out of sight from everyone. And we're in our own quarantine and our quarantine is great because we get in the boat, we go to walk on the island, but we can go snorkeling and swim in the water. All of these things you're not allowed to do when you're in quarantine. We don't know. If we ask them information, they will probably know more. Well, they ought to know information about where we could go. So, and we're going to have some food and water. They might, they might want a song and dance. Let's hope he doesn't ask us for the uh, passport stamp <laughs> from Cuba. It doesn't matter. This is the official. I know, but what happened? <laughs> I know, but what happened last time when the Haiti people said, do you have a stamp in your passport from Cuba? No, they don't do that anymore. You have to leave now. Yeah, but hopefully you will be a bit uh, switched on, no? Well, I don't know. They weren't switched on with that one. Well, those cars, cars have to kind of improve their <laughs> skills. <laughs> Bread and crackers. Bread and crackers. Wow. Oh no. Sausage. Oh. We have fruit. Mm. Fruit. Pear, pear, pear. Melon. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jesus, we knew the Colombians were nice people. They are lovely we people. Love mm. Melon. It smells good. This is how Margarita gets with me after she hasn't seen me for a couple of months. Well, maybe not. Coffee? I will give him back the coffee. Will you give him back the coffee? Yeah. What's this? Oh, crackers. Yeah, cookies. Because when we start being in sailing, this is your best, your best well, friend. It's probably, well, pro probably the worst for you. Best friend. A little more sausage. <laughs> Should we sterilize it? <laughs> what are you happy so before? Oh, and they gave us water. I'm super happy. It feels so good that someone cares about you and you're healthy and simply just wanna help you. This female officer, she was just went behind yawned. So she gave me female products. That I've, that I've been needing, and she gave me treats, she gave me chips, you know, some uh, crackers, and a brownie. Ooh. The Colombian Coast Guard captain, I cannot speak too highly about. Uh, he had a real human heart. Clearly he knew something was up with a lone boat out here and there were no boats anywhere and there were no threats, there was no anger, there was no what are you doing here. Clearly he knew something was up and something was wrong 
And look, he just demonstrated intelligence and common sense where in all the other countries, we common sense seemed to go out the window. So good on you, Colombians, top stuff. Uh, we got 60 litres of diesel, 120 litres of water, and we got some food. And the most special food was the brownie, which brought a beautiful smile to the beautiful margarita. And she'd been having a tough time. So, well done, Colombians. Uh, you're wonderful people. The whole team on the Coast Guard, they were wonderful. And to me, special, especially the female officer, she was very, very nice to me. Yeah. Now, uh, also, he came back uh, about some information that he could possibly uh, get us into San Andreas to do our quarantine. Yeah, you got in contact um, with the station in San Andreas and they gave permission for us to stay there. Although we couldn't answer uh, how we had to do quarantine, if we had to go to a marina or an hotel, how would be the procedures. And if this uh, pandem pandemic extends for months, um, San Andreas won't be a safe place to be because it has big storms. Yeah. So, and we were still waiting for information from Tampa Dad Bill about Panama. So we still had Panama as our main choice. That's right. It was where we were going to probably be forced to go in there, but we didn't quite know. And, um, but... It was an option. It was an option. But with the um, Coast Guard here, we still had to go.